everybody. I hope you're ready for your new course, ESOL 6003 Methods and Instructional Materials for the ELL. We'll do a brief overview of the course syllabus, but of course you'll want to read it in its entirety so there's no um, questions or surprises for you. In the course syllabus, you'll see the course description, and we really will focus on some theory and some background information about second language acquisition, um, but then we really want to get into best practices for you in the, in the classroom. There are a couple of textbooks that you'll need for this course. The first one is the SIOP book, and you can either buy the elementary or the secondary um, version of it, just depending what your grade level is. But I would also look at your school library, because a lot of times schools will have this particular book. The other book is there at the top of the page, uh, Reading, Writing, and, and Learning in ESL. and. Um, What's published there is the 6th edition, however we had some confusion and so if you have the 5th edition that is fine also. Um, but what I would like to know is if you have the 5th or the 6th edition, so if you email me then I can kind of know who has which edition. Um, then you'll see the course objectives and again you want to make sure you read through those so you understand what the course is all about. Um, then we have our GSE goals 1 through 5, and those are for the whole school of education, um, what we want you to have by the time you leave us. Of course, you already have these things, but as master students, we want you to enhance the communication, your instruction competence, your leadership, your diversity knowledge, and then your standards-based contra expertise. expertise. So, what are the requirements for this course? Of course, it's the attendance. And you've all taken online courses before, so the attendance is the forums, the readings, the Adobe Connects, any wikis, things like that. And that's 20% of your grade, so make sure you're doing all the activities that are listed each week. Um, your first assignment will be a philosophy of teaching English learners. And you're already experienced teachers, and I understand you've done a philosophy of education, I'm sure, in your undergrad courses and that sort of thing. But I want you to think about how does that then relate to teaching English language learners. And you're going to go ahead and do it this first week, and just to turn it in, and what are your thoughts right now? And then towards the end of the course, you'll redo it, expand, change, um, whatnot, and then that will really be graded with a rubric. So that'll be a total of 13% of your grade. Then we'll do some work with the Common Core. We're all using Common Core um, or something like Common Core probably in your classroom. But how does that relate to ELLs? What kind of support would an, an English language learner need to be successful? Because we all have to meet the same standards, but how do we get our students there? Um, another thing that I would like you to become familiar with is who are some important people in the field? And so you'll choose a researcher or an author and find out more about them and just write a summary of his or her contributions to the, the field. One of the big assignments that you'll have and the assignment that you'll put in task stream is your collaborative research paper. So you'll be with a partner and you'll write an 8 to 10 page research paper with some kind of issue that you're having surrounding English language learners. Um, you also might think about what you would want to research for your action research course, and we'll talk more about this, but you'll do a problem question form, you'll participate uh, with each other, and then you'll have a final paper that you'll submit, and that's 25% of your grade. Um, you'll also do a language case study, and this will be with a student that you have in your classroom, um, and you'll interview the student, um, you'll look at different uh, levels and, and determine different levels of English proficiency, and um, there's a template for that, um, but you'll really, really think about how you might best instruct this student after finding out more about them. Uh, you'll also do a PSYOP lesson plan, and I know, again, you're experienced teachers, but this will cause you to have to think through some things that you don't normally think through, especially a language objective, and we'll be talking a lot more as the course goes on. And then at the end, you'll do a TESOL standards reflection. Um, we're the overarching uh, organization for teachers of English to speakers of other languages, um, and they have standards for 
teachers who are getting their endorsement. And um, so we'll see how you're doing on completing those standards and meeting those standards. So those are your major um, assignments that you'll have throughout the course. And the next thing you'll see is just class schedule and assignments. And I always put the date, I put the topic, what the objectives are, what your readings are, and then any assignments that you have. And I always put the dates there, so if you, can, if you come to time and I can't remember when something's due, you can look at this. Or if you go on down, um, you'll see the grading, and that also has the assignments and when they're, when they're due. So you can always look there. I try to put it in the weekly syllabus, but sometimes I forget and don't get it on there. One thing I do want to mention right now is, as in any online course, we'll have a couple of times that we have Adobe Connect sessions. So go ahead and get these on your calendar, either on September 8th at 7 o'clock or September 9th at 4.30, we'll have an Adobe Connect. And you can choose which date that you'd like to attend. And then our second Adobe Connect will be either October 13th at 7 o'clock or October 14th at 4.30. So please make plans to um, have about an hour where you can get on the computer and you can have a discussion with us. The last part of the agenda just has the course policies, guidelines, and then some support. And so um, you'll read about the style, honesty policy, late work policy. Remember that if you turn in a paper late, it's 10% off for every day up to three days late. After that, it's worth no credit. However, if something unexpected happens, um, you know, you're in the hospital or whatnot, um, of course, just please let me know and um, I'll work with you. Um, accessing papers, make sure that you um, keep your papers. And if not, I'll keep them for about a year. If you need any accommodations, there we have accommodations that you may be able to uh, receive um, and it explains what you need to do and the next one is is can be connected to that it's a Kresge Academic Support Center so even if you don't need accommodations but you need some help with your writing for example um, that's a great place to go and and whether you're online or here on campus they can help you out um, the online piece of it is the next one and the online tutoring or smart thinking. So again, I want you want to encourage you to take advantage of things. Um, we also have a new writing specialist. So on your collaborative research paper, if you're having trouble uh, with writing um, and it is going to be an APA style, uh, you can, you can uh, contact the Kresge Center and they can help you out. Um, maybe library, again, as an online student, all the resources from the library are available to you. Um, you can look at the databases, and I really want you to encourage you to do that also. As I mentioned earlier, Task Stream, you'll be turning your research paper into Moodle and to Task Stream. Um, I think you probably have all used Task Stream, but if not, uh, we'll get you your ID and so on so you can put it in there. And that's just a data collection for us. We have to collect certain assignments and then uh, report out on how people do, not individually, but as a group on, on those assignments. And then at the end, uh, please, please turn in your course evaluation. Um, you'll get one from the university and one from the education department. And so if you would do that, it really, really helps, um, helps me out for the next time I, I do this course. Uh, the last thing here is the Kansas Educator Code of Conduct. And this is just a reminder, but it's something that KSDE would like us to put in um, every syllabus. Um, so just reminding teachers uh, to abide by the Code of Conduct. And then we just have the references and, and so on. Um, but I think we'll have a great course. I look forward to working with all of you. And um, as always, just let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns. And we'll just get going and learn a lot. Thanks so much.